Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and today I'm finishing the repairs to my sump pump. As you might remember from a recent video, the float switch on my sump pump started acting up on a weekend evening during a rain event. I used an Arduino to tickle the switch every hour to make sure the basement stayed dry until I was able to replace the switch, which I just completed. I've also updated my video editing software, and I have to learn its new interface. So I figured I'd kill two birds with one stone and put together a little video on my repairs. So why don't you join me as we replace the switch on my Zoller M53 sump pump. I'd like to spend a moment on safety. There's nothing more important than keeping you and your loved ones safe. Be sure to read, understand, and follow the safety rules for your tools. Using your tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury and always use the appropriate eye, hearing, and respiratory personal protective equipment. This time we're working with pumps, dirty water, and electricity. Nasty things can happen if you aren't careful. You could shock yourself or get some crappy water in your eyes or mouth. Also, be sure you don't impede the normal operation of the pump. You could cause flooding if the pump is damaged. If you're following along, you're doing so at your own risk. And if you don't feel comfortable doing any of these activities, then don't. Now, let's get started. As you can see, the Arduino and servo kept the sump level down. Now it's time to repair the switch. I first removed the pump and noticed that the switch housing was warm. I tested the resistance between the hot and neutral of the pump line cord and discovered there was about a 1300 ohm resistance with the switch in the off position. There should be infinite resistance with the switch off, so there must be some contamination. I removed the float, first by stretching the rubber float rod guide over the bottom of the float rod, and then by turning the float rod 90 degrees and unhooking it from the switch arm assembly. Next, I remove the four screws that hold the switch housing to the pump. After they were removed, I tapped the switch housing lightly to pop it off the pump and, oh yuck, Ooh. it was full of water. What a mess. That's not good. Let's get it cleaned up. First, I'll remove the wires between the switch and the pump and between the line cord and the switch. Next, I'll get rid of the water, clean the switch housing, and dry it out. I removed the old switch and cleaned the top of the switch housing. I also removed the old rubber gasket since the new one came with the switch repair kit. I gently cleaned the switch arm seal with a soft brush and found that it had deteriorated a bit, which is how the water got into the switch housing. Normally, the switch housing is not underwater, but about a year ago, we had a long power outage and the sump got really full. This is probably what led to the switch housing filling with water. In an attempt to keep the switch housing dry, I added a little silicone sealant around where the switch arm seal contacts the switch arm. 
I have to be careful not to use too much since the switch arm needs to move freely. While the sealant dried, I cleaned the mating surfaces of the switch housing to prepare it for the new gasket. I used files and a honing stone to get them as clean and flat as possible. About this time, I started to suspect that the switch arm itself was causing the problem since it wasn't moving as smoothly as I thought it should. I didn't have a replacement, so I had to continue installing the new switch and hope that it would work well enough until I got a new arm. Of course, I just couldn't wait for a new part. I needed to get the sump pump back in action since the sump was slowly filling with water. The switch repair kit included a new switch, a stabilizing bar, a couple screws, and a new pressure test plug. I installed the new switch using the stabilizing bar to support the switch as shown in the instructions. It worked, but how well? I won't know that until I try it out. I added some blue Hylomar gasket dressing between the switch housing and the gasket. Then I reinstalled the wires between the line cord, switch, and pump and fitted the switch housing top to the pump, making sure there were no wires in the way. After tightening the four cover screws, I checked the resistance across the plug with the switch off. It was an open circuit, just like it should be. Then I lightly pressurized the switch housing and used some soapy water to check for leaks. So far, so good. So I installed the new test plug and reinstalled the pump. Unfortunately, the sticky switch arm proved to be a problem. I needed to reinstall my Arduino switch tickler so I could keep the sump empty until I received a new replacement switch arm. I would suggest to anyone doing this that they replace the switch arm at the same time they replace the switch. I'll fast forward to replacing the switch arm. I removed the switch housing and switched just like the last time. Then I used the punch to drive out the old switch arm. I cleaned the switch arm mounting area of the switch housing of old sealant and crud using a rat tail file. I noted the proper direction for mounting the switch arm and then applied new sealant around the outside of the switch arm mounting flange and inside the switch housing. I used a small piece of pipe to drive the switch arm home, first making sure it had the proper orientation.
Like previously, I reinstalled the switch, gasket, wires, and then reinstalled the switch housing. I reinstalled the float and float rod. Then I reinstalled the pump into the sump. The moment of truth, as the water level slowly rises, the pump snapped on and then snapped off at the right level. Success! Thanks for joining me today. I replaced the float arm assembly and switch for my Zoller M53 sump pump. I'm looking forward to at least five more years of service before I have to worry about it again. Plus, I got more familiar with my new video software. If you like this video, or you think someone else might, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. The more likes this video has, the more YouTube will recommend it to others. Also, please leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of the new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon!